What's good, comic book family? As you can see, we are a full house today. Welcome from all over the world. Welcome to the basics, not the basics, the back to basics, a comic book podcast. We are not, we are beyond basic. We are the team who met because of the love of the medium, and now we are stuck together forever. Try to pry us apart, it won't happen. So if you're looking for something new, refreshing, tailored to the nostalgia of yesteryear, or you're just a new collector trying to figure out their way through this madness, you came to the right spot. My name is Gen X, and I'm the Puerto Rock extraordinaire from Brooklyn, New York, by way of parents from the island known as Borican, aka Puerto Rico, to the rest of the world. Uh, I love this community, and we are dedicating all of this work to those who gave us the platform to do what we do you all so we acknowledge that we couldn't be here uh to do this without you all and the people who created the heroes uh we have grown to love and thank you all for that and my name is ebony keys from the sunshine state and i am proud to be here y'all with all of y'all to throw some education your way while i captivate your minds that bring us back to basics this trio has been working hard to change the game and we don't do it without the support of our community, friends, and family. And... Most death, and it's your boy Tempos, bringing up mix of comics and culture to your ear. You know who it is. I'm definitely the man with the most complete says. I'm gonna hold that, I'm gonna own it. I'm the man that loves to flag. Y'all know who it is. Let's take it back to basics. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Oh, just to give you, this is how crazy the 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 stream is gonna be today. They, our people already showed up. Look, Marcus just yelled out, "Yo, he's yo, ready. yo. <laughs> Marcus, we appreciate you." We are streaming. We started this podcast because we noticed something was missing, and we wanted to press the reset button. To be quite honest, and we also saw that a lot of things that we were seeing in the medium was status quo, and we wanted to, you know, we want a representation from all identities. So we believe that the stories told are a reflection of the human experience. Experience. And so we go deep, deep. We be digging. Uh, yeah. We talk about issues about race, ethnicity, gender, mental health, and other human challenges. We also highlight amazing artists, writers, publishing companies, known and unknown by interviewing them and giving them their shine because they deserve it. And you can count on us to tackle themes and also make sure that we're bringing you back to basics. So enough of the formalities. I'm, I almost rapped. I was about to go back to my okay. Brooklyn night self. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay. Right. Now the good heroics from you come into play. <laughs> Tell everybody, subscribe to our channel, like and share. And most importantly, follow us on Instagram. We're really easy to follow. And then you can DM us and we can have a real conversation. So right. we are all personalities in our own right. And together we aim to flex our powers for good. And in all seriousness, we want and need your support. We want you to dialogue with us today. So make sure that you're in the chat uh doing it big time so engage with each other and the guests we bring on we want to be professors and students within this space so we are always going to be learning and teaching always from each other and bringing things back to the great days of collecting back to basic so today's show is part two of our conversation about crazy ravenous and re unrelenting chihuahuas and this is going to be a fun episode. <laughs> this is another live event on YouTube and Twitch, and we have a great show for you. So this time around, we'll have, again, the creatives, like I said, behind the Night of the Chihuahuas. And they have some amazing new books coming our way and some updates and things of that nature. So I am going to play a little bit of a video. It's going to be hilarious. But before I do that, let me make sure. I, I, Marcus said Flex fam. That's our family. They show up yeah. hard. Um, so here we go. We're going to show a little bit of the video of um, the Night of the Chihuahua. So Awesome. All right. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. And let me just do a little bit of an introduction of these two amazing people, David Kiros Jr. and Victor Irizari. 
Um, let's start with the creator and writer himself, David Kuros. Um, David is an Arizona na native that lives in Phoenix with his wife, kids, and two terrible dogs. Not, terrible not, dogs. Not terrible. <laughs> not terrible. Come on now. They can't be that bad. <laughs> Are they chihuahuas? Are they chihuahuas? <laughs> I, I actually uh, work with Rescue, and uh, one of them is a chihuahua dachshund mix, but he is the fattest chihuahua on record. So. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, poor, poor baby. Poor, poor baby. Yeah. <laughs> we don't try to body shame him too much. But, you know. <laughs> but, but the, the boy's got some thickness. That's all. Okay. That we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little bit of thickness. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, this keys we done, we done, we done got off the rails. Look I know, this. right? <laughs> Already, that's what I do. Right, right away. You you let me talk, and I immediately pull hey, us off. Nothing the rails. wrong with that. <laughs> So, um, David, he is uh, currently has several comic books in, de in development, including Adventures of Gabe's, Gabe's Cave, Legends of Maynard Lake, and he has created and wrote the horror fiction podcast, Red Riding Hoods, which was produced by Violet Hour Media in a future film, B Big Book Massacre. Well, that sounds kind of, that sounds kind of. Interesting. I don't know. About uh, that. It's, it's going to be interesting for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now on to Victor. Victor J. Irizarry, born you, you, in. Huh? You did it right. Did that great job with my name? I did. Yeah, yes. I did it, y'all. I did. Yeah. I did it. All right. <laughs> All right. Victor J. Irizarry, born in Umakao. Umakao. Yep. Umakao. Umakao. We told you you were honorary. Okay, I, I got right. this. <laughs> Not only is he a teacher of visual storytelling at Arizona State University, but he is also a com comic book creator of covers that we know to this day, y'all. To mm -hmm. this day. In the years since, Victor has created, has had not created, but had a career as a concept artist and cover artist for, can y'all guess? Can y'all guess? Image <laughs> Comics, y'all. Image. <laughs> Working on exclusive covers for titles including Ice Cream Man, number 25, Lady Mechanica, number one, the most recent Zombies versus Robots, number one, published five books, y'all. Five. Five books. And is the creator of Red, R-O-D, yep. robotic enhanced device. Yep. Now, Victor lives in Arizona with his wife, two amazing boys, and two beautiful dogs. You notice I didn't say terrible, but <laughs> <laughs> they are beautiful. They are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> now, my my bro, bro, tempos would jumpstart our conversation and get us into the minds of these amazing creators. Appreciate yeah, you, appreciate yeah, you. Yeah. So you. on our first live, we was talking to Nate and he was telling us, you know, how his part of how y'all met the, the family, how y'all got together. I want to hear y'all side of the story. I'm, I'm sure it's more of a fascinating tale because the way Nate was saying it is definitely all love and support. But tell me, tell me how y'all met, how we are introduced to each other and how it followed from there. Yeah, so I know uh, Nate and I met many, many, many years ago because he was uh, doing film reviews for a startup magazine called A to Z, and I was an independent filmmaker and made some movies, and so he asked if he could get some review screening copies since we were local here to Phoenix, and uh, he ended up really enjoying them, wrote some very nice write-ups, and then afterwards he was like, what's your next project? I'd like to work with you on that. So uh, we got our start doing film together. And then the market kind of dried up for independent production. Uh, just the distributor, what the distributors are paying was not, you know, nearly what you were uh, putting into the production. So uh, we went dormant for a little while. I focused on writing. And then I had these big ideas that it was like, you know, I'm never going to get the money to put them on film. But meanwhile, I was consuming every comic book I could find. And I was like, you know what? I think I've got this idea about killer chihuahuas. And it's ludicrous and hilarious, but it cannot be done 
yeah. without like you know animal trainers and like an army of chihuahuas and all this other stuff and i started thinking about how it would look as a layout as like you're opening these comic book pages and how amazing that would be uh and so i started scripting it but i still didn't have any ends with the industry and so nathan was still working to get those connections and he uh, we reconnected and he said hey i would like to help you get this done and the rest is uh kill a chihuahua history i guess for lack of a better term right. <laughs> and then we're fortunate enough to make meet Victor. Uh, Victor works with a local comic book shop called Monster Comics, yeah. and we were at the uh, we were both at the launch of that comic book shop. Got to meet each other, saw his work. It's amazing as you've seen, and uh, we hit it off. And we we're fortunate enough to work together. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was at a at a mini comic con actually, or a mini con that they put together. I uh, there. I mean, I, I don't work there, but I spend enough time there that they should pay me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but um but yeah monster comics uh they definitely are very supportive of the local you know artists and uh artists in general i mean i, I feel like phoenix there's like a few a handful of people that are very strong supporters of the art you know and and, and the storytelling visual storytelling uh and so they 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 do this different we always have our go-to's right we 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 call each other the artists talk to each other um, and we were tabling together and then I met David there and Nathan came over and said, Hey man, how do you feel about doing a, a cover? And I'm like, let's roll with it. Let's do this. And then when, when he told me the concept, I'm like, heck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> nice. that is awesome. but I bet a whole bunch of ideas popped in your head that right? day. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. I still, I still have the original sketch. I want to show you guys later, but Ooh, yeah, I'd love to see that. Is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is. Funny enough that both of y'all bring that up. David, I, I really want to hear this. Your inspiration. And I know, I hope I don't say the name wrong. I think when you were, I believe when you were in college, a lot of your inspiration come from your Chihuahua back in the day. Am I saying it right? Is it Coco or Cocoa? Coco. Coco. Yep. Okay. So Coco. I read about Coco. Like she was, <laughs> uh, uh, she was a little beast. Like tell me, tell me how that inspiration came. Yeah. So I met this dog when I was in like junior high and she was already old and she was the meanest chihuahua I've ever met. Like my Nana owned her and she chased all the kids off the yard. We all had to hide from her because she was vicious, but like she's so tight. She was about like yay big, tight, skinny and old dog. And then my Nana moved and she couldn't take Coco with her. So she was like, do you guys want her? And we were terrified. We we're like, what this like demon dog. And then she ended up bonding with me once we owned, once we got her out of her yard, she bonded with me and became like my baby to the point where I went off to college and every time I came home from college she would like look at me like a scorned girlfriend and, like turn her back to me and leave and refuse to come and then eventually she'd come back out and like just jump in my lap like nothing ever happened but even during then she would still like bully me out if I was sitting where she wanted to sit or you know anything going on she'd still growl and snap and it just always made me laugh how mean she was and how all these other chihuahuas that i met that were mean and you're like if you guys you guys think that you're so big and tough and if you had the strength to back up your attitudes it would be illegal to own you and then i started thinking like how funny would that be if these chihuahuas suddenly did they were able to do all the things that they thought they could do and then it just kind of rolled from there and so coco is the name of the main chihuahua in the comic book uh, that the character erica holds in her mm -hmm. purse and it's supposed to be like a spoof of you know the girl who keeps her chihuahua in her purse and treats it so nice, the chihuahua versus the chihuahuas that are growing up in the yards and feral. And, you know, mm -hmm. they, they're the ones that get a hold of the serum that turns them into uh, killer mutants. And so it's, yeah, we have some fun with it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, reading the books, I, we definitely asked Nate last time how a lot of these characters were created, developed. Like, what was these a lot of people that were in your life when? when you were writing about the characters themselves or like did yes. you just come up with them on the fly okay no so i originally when i wrote this i was trying to think of a movie that i could shoot and so i was writing it based on people that i knew because i was going to cast them uh if we were able to get the movie done uh so like the character johnny is based on one of my best friends ron who is like that big you know he, he is the, like the big guy who's uh i Ron is not anything like Johnny beyond that, but like he's got that kind of look. And I was like, how funny would it be to have you playing that stereotypical Arizona hillbilly who's just like <laughs> driving around in his, you know, pickup truck, like having the time of his life fighting these mutants? Because like guys like him, 
this is what they dream of, right? It's like, oh, the yeah. apocalypse, finally, I'm no longer the biggest loser in the neighborhood. I'm now the <laughs> toughest guy in the neighborhood. And <laughs> it's now time for them to, you know, this is what they dream of. And then you've got Erica, who I based on my little sister, because uh, she is the one who owns the Chihuahua. Samantha was a conglomeration of just... I've always been a fan of powerful female action stars, uh, you know, Sarah Connor and uh, Ada Wong in the Resident Evil video games. And so it's like I was drawn to this concept and uh, kind of inspired by in Silent Hill, the female police officer, Sybil, uh, I think her last name is Bennett, who shows up yeah. on the scene. And, you know, that's kind of what gave me this idea of the police officer who shows up in the middle of just what the hell is going on. And she's the only voice of reason because of course, Leon is a big doofus as he's supposed to look like what you think the action hero will look like. And then you just find out he's completely incompetent. He gets <laughs> even more incompetent as the series goes on before he finally like finds his redemption arc, which, you know, spoiler alert, he's going to redeem oh. himself. But... Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, but he gets worse. He gets a lot worse. You haven't seen his... <laughs> Now, you haven't now, seen David, his weakest moments. I do have to tell you, uh, I think one day myself and Miss Keys got on, we were, we're actually reading through the comic book and we actually did literally voiceovers for every single panel. Yes. Nice. I, heard that. I wish I recorded it. So if you ever. I wish you get, did too. Uh, it was hilarious. It was so funny. Um, myself oh, and her daughter actually did it. Uh, yes. As, as a tandem. Nice. We had oh, that's cool. It was that's fun. cool. That's really cool. But, yeah. So Victor, um, not to switch gears, but okay. So now you get David's like written pieces, and now you're looking to put them to life in this, you know, this beautiful, beautiful covers, and and also the 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 work that comes with it. Um, tell us about that process first of all, because I've always wanted to be a comic book artist. Um, yeah, and I used to well, be, a, so you know, just I mean, just just to be fair, you know, uh, the the art in the interior art's been done by Albert Morales, which I you know a different artist. Um, and I was invited to do a variant cover, kind of more of a, a hip hop cover inspired. And uh, um, I was like Nathan. I mean, so he, David and Nathan, kind of challenged me because I'm not, I don't dwell in the horror. Um, so this was kind of like. I love challenges and I'm like, yeah, man, let's draw it. Let's do something uh, different. And I was intrigued by the concept. Uh, it's just that I, I grew up with Chihuahuas all my life. You know, Puerto Rico, they're just like your set, your alarm, basically. You know, when somebody shows, <laughs> somebody shows up at your house, you know, they start barking. Um, so I was like, heck yeah, man, let's do it. And, and you know, I'm a strong supporter of, of the weird and the unique. Um, and to me, that was just like, that's everything said it was just everything aligned so um and these guys are good people you know um so uh i just sat down and started sketching and uh the, my process goes i'm very communicative so i like to kind of just start sending sketches right away and when he told me when nathan uh told me about the concept of, for the variant cover uh the biggie smalls it was he was, I mean, he had it all organized and beautifully set up and I was like, perfect, let's go with this. So, you know, you start with the shape of the dog and, um, and I just started thinking about my terrible dogs. Uh, my, when I had chihuahuas, the, the ones that I have now are beautiful and nice. And anyways, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I start sketching and my process, it's like, I start, uh, depends on the piece right but i start kind of drawing by hand so i just start rough sketches by hand or sometimes on my ipad and i go back and forth between digital and and uh and analog if you may like so i scan the piece and then i come back and i would just kind of work on it digitally but all the colors are done digitally um or in the in the ipad that's nice yeah yeah it's and something about uh, my drawings is always I'm always being intrigued by the idea of each each drawing has to tell a story on its own. You know what I mean? Like even even when I'm laying out my comic books, uh, my own comic books, I I I start everything without words. And the idea is if I can follow the the frames, if I can follow the story without words, then the words just like it's like the work is done right like ideally my my dream is to do a comic book with no words 
Um, and then, so the, the cool thing about it is just like, because it's a, it's a visual media, right? So it's like, a, uh, and you know, there's controversy, there's controversy on that, right? Because there's the writers like David, you know, like that's how they see the ideas, but they also use images. And then there's the storytellers, like visual storytellers that use drawings to tell the stories. So I kind of dwell in between the two. So what I tried to do, because English was my second language, it's my second language. So what I tried to do is to make it as universal as possible with the drawings. So like not, try to not be redundant. So if the guy is jumping, I, I, you know what I say? Like, you don't say it, the guy is jumping. You know, you right. just kind of let it be. Kinda, it's like a film uh, tactic, I guess. So that's that's something how I, I go about laying out my panels, and et cetera. That's awesome. Okay. That's <laughs> nice. Can't wait to see this movie or oh, uh, animation. Maybe <laughs> the animation. Person. Animation, <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know you got to have a lot of stories behind you. I mean, I'm looking back there. You, you must be a big Star Wars fan. I am a huge Star Wars fan. <laughs> Mandalorian, uh, Batman, Lego. I got Batman on this side. I got Hellboy. I'm a, I'm a huge Ma- uh, Magnolia fan. For my art, it's very much influenced by Magnolia. I like to say like, it's a mix of Magnolia and uh, Adventure Time. Have you guys seen that show? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, like here's a cover of, of Red. Nice. Um, nice. So it's, it's kind of like a very contrast dark you know black and white and then kind of simple shapes so that's why it was a challenge when i did that drawing for these guys because here it's uh the sketch i don't know if you're gonna see Whoa. it that is nice. <laughs> it's so cool tempos is, is about to ask you how much you want for that he's about yeah. to ask <laughs> Wait. i need that on the wall i need that no on you the don't wall. <laughs> <laughs> you got enough for your wall. And he doesn't have the crown, so the crown was added later. Um, that that biggie one, hands down. Yeah, uh, that's. I don't know. Do you guys have it with you? I don't have it with me. Oh. I would have no. been like this, like a baby. This is I so saw. <laughs> there was a color version somewhere out there. <laughs> yeah. So the series was fully funded by the Kickstarter, right? And. um so so now we're in the production for the rest of the series. What should yep. we expect from you know Night of the Chihuahuas without spoiling it? What what it, are some some do you need any voiceover artists like myself and Miss Keys? I would <laughs> love to, especially Look, now that I know that, that service is available. I would absolutely love that. I can do a little put a little country twang in it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would let's, you let's could be you could be samantha you could totally be <laughs> officer branch officer yes! Samantha. so <laughs> yes i'll do it i'll do it yeah so. she's um i mean i love that character i think she reminds it's i grew up with like a very with a single mom who was super no nonsense and so a lot of her attitude towards leon like reminds me of the way that my mom would just like you know the smack upside the head anytime i was like screwing around or something and you know that kind of mentality so uh, you got to have that attitude with her, that swagger. But the next few issues are going to get... So issue three is kind of like our bridge uh, episode or episode uh, issue between the survivor. Now we've got all the survivors together. Uh, we know what the threat is. And it kind of becomes a siege mentality where the Chihuahuas have everybody surrounded in one location. And it's up to these survivors to try to figure out how they can work together to survive or else all their infighting and bickering is going to prohibit them from, you know... Uh, forming a cohesive defense and then the chihuahuas are going to get in so now that we're dealing with people in in the chihuahuas massed in one location uh the carnage steps up quite a bit and so we have up to this point we've had the chihuahuas like attacking people and it's been a lot of fun but we are going to have them taking it up uh quite a bit and i don't want to spoil it but uh you're going to get to see quite a bit of mayhem <laughs> you can, can spoil it just a little bit just, just, <laughs> well, we're gonna see what happens when a chihuahua <laughs> decide that somebody is a chew toy and grab grab them from either end and we'll see some you know different things like that so nice <laughs> yeah it should be it should be pretty cool it's a uh, building up to quite the uh, horrifying climax and then uh, i've got some ideas for that so it's going to resolve itself in five issues this story arc and then we've got some concepts for the next storyline and then the next one after that and then hopefully we can keep going i mean there's a whole lot of more stories to tell and what i've dubbed the chihuahua verse but you know we'll see mm-hmm. the chihuahua verse awesome. i like that the chihuahua right verse. I like that. <laughs> yeah so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try and share 
I think <clears throat> um, I'm going to try and share a, um, let me make sure it's the right one. Of course it's not. Um, <laughs> and why are you love... doing that? It's funny how the beginning starts. It's a boy and a girl. They're doing something in the uh, 10. It's like a basic <laughs> one of the horror movies that you'll watch from back in the day. Right. And then it, the way it turns yep. out, I was like, I don't want to ruin any anything for our fans. It's just the yeah. way it starts. It's like, oh my god, this is gonna be so good! It's like yes. a horror movie, a zombie movie. Like, what is gonna happen? The mix of it is so beautiful. Congrats on it! I, I definitely thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, this this was a love letter to all my favorite monster movies, and it was very much inspired by you know that stinger that opens up that it kind of establishes who the monsters are and what the threat is, and then just everything about this series is you know I try to take as many of the conventions and kind of turn them on their head or have a little bit of fun with them, um, but it is very very much a love letter to the monster movie genre. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Such a cool concept, man. Like I I think it's it, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I've you. never heard of. So it's like once I got into it, I was like, wow, like look at this. This is brand new to the indie genre. Thank you. <laughs> like we needed this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> so here well, and it's we, we're just showing the comic book. I think this is issue number one. Yeah, yeah, that's um, towards the middle. I think there on the right, that right page, I believe, is like the last page of issue one, and just kind of gives you like uh, building up some of the scope of what happened to this town that the survivors are in, where you know just about everybody's been wiped out already. Right. That's a shame. And then you hit us with the <laughs> to be continue. <laughs> I know, right? Yep. To be continue. <laughs> yeah, so there on the left, that's issue. That's like the first few pages of the. Uh, the ill-fated uh, couple that's, you know, uh, it's like in, in, in all those movies, right? It was like the couple that's trying to uh, get the freak on and, you know, right? not to be not to be had, man. The morality police shows up and uh, just tells them no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. See, the voiceover is I'm, I'm really hesitating, but okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, OK, it's, o it's over, kids. You better stop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Cool. <laughs> but I wanted to show the audience some of this artwork. Just really cool. Uh, I love mm -hmm. the fact that it's you know a uh, different artist as well. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, the colors mm -hmm. are freaking amazing. Yeah, beautiful, um, beautiful. These are gorgeous, gorgeous. I love that one too. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Um, I think that one's my favorite. We got, I got that one up on my wall. But like our whole goal was to have uh, you know your normal cover that kind of sh tells somebody who's walking by and want, oh wow that I can guess from the cover what the story is about but then we also have like the chihuahua uh with the chihuahua jaws and the chihuahua godzilla and so it's like every issue we're going to try to have an homage to a classic monster uh mm -hmm. using a chihuahua i love that concept that's so right. original and then biggie small and then chihuahua there small it is. yes there it is yeah. oh, oh, gorgeous. <laughs> it's a bad cover i'm uh, glad we uh, yeah. so we got kickstarter <laughs> man who just wrote so we got to go to Kickstarter. There we go. Uh, so the Kickstarter is actually over. We had 370% uh, funding, so it was a success. Kickstarter is over, but um, if you go to our website, nightofthechihuahuas.com, or uh, which is also linked through the Instagram account that's there on page, uh, you can get everything that was there because you know it was a victory for us. So nice. uh, all that will be available to anybody who is not uh, able to jump onto the Kickstarter when it was live. Gotcha. Because if, if you want it, better jump yep. on it. <laughs> it is there. And, you know, the thing is, like, I, I always tell people, too, when we're at these uh, fan fests and conventions and stuff, and it's like, you know, everything that we're making right now, every penny that this project uh, receives is going right back into it. Because until mm -hmm. we get done with issue five, I mean, we're still working on this series. You know, it's like we can... Mm -hmm. Uh, basically it's like, okay, now the Kickstarter, yay, we can, fu it's funded, we can make it, but we still have more to do. You know, there's still a mm -hmm. lot of, uh, more conventions we can reach more, um, outreach that we can do with the fans across the country. We're in, gosh, I think it was like, I want to say like eight States right now, like 20 different stores in eight different States. And mm -hmm. we're just trying to, all of our, everything that we do is word of mouth. So right. we don't have a marketing arm. We don't have a giant publisher behind us. Uh, we're not in diamond, you know, the big comic, um, uh, the comic preview book that all the shops get and everything. So it's like everything that we do is just word of mouth. And so the more that uh, we get out there, the more people that back us, uh, the more that we have to 
get this work out there because it's gotten such a great response. Uh, it's obvious that there's a big market for this. People really have yeah. uh, been responding to it well, telling all their friends. And so we know it's out there. It's just a matter of keeping up that, keeping up the grind and the hustle and uh, yeah. getting it in people's hands. Right. That's what's up. Hitting goals. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Support you know indie. For sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. And, and you kind of hit one of my other questions in the book. So you say uh, events. Uh, how, what is your best events that you have been to, like y'all went into knowing that it's going to be a great day and had a lot of fun? Like, can y'all tell me like uh, a basic beautiful story that you have or what comic cons, things like that? Because we comic book has, we all love going to comic cons. And I've seen yeah. that y'all have been to a couple. So what's some good stories that you have? Uh oh! Uh, can you can you tell us? <laughs> yeah, I was, you know, I'll I'll keep the G. I'll I'll give you the PG rated version now. I'm just <laughs> so, I mean, my thing was like I've always so born and raised in Phoenix. Uh, the Phoenix Fan Fusion was amazing to see uh, the back the backing that we got. Me and Victor actually, we both went to the Tucson Comic Con, and I'm Tucson was a very important place to me in my birth, and the comic book takes place. Uh, the police officer is from Tucson. He's wearing like a Tucson PD uh, t-shirt. And then it takes place in Southern Arizona, which is south of Tucson. But Tucson, they showed up and they backed us so much. And like I had family showing up from, you know, I hadn't seen in years who had just heard that I was yeah. going to be here. And people walking by that just, you know, the number, I mean, Tucson's got like a yeah. huge Chihuahua population. And the number of people that came up to me to show me pictures of the Chihuahua, and they were like, oh, I'm going to buy this for my yeah. Nana. Or I'm going to buy this. And then we had like a, a Pima County animal control showed up and they bought a whole big old set because they were like i'm handing this out to everybody because we all hate chihuahuas so it was like chihuahua <laughs> chihuahua lovers chihuahua haters um people that were happy to see southern arizona put on on a comic book page which you know i mean when has that ever happened and so yeah. uh, that response that we got there it was like one of the best single day events that we had and I remember at the end of it, man, my voice was just shot. I was talking to yeah. so many people and it was exhausting. And it was also like, I was just on a high afterwards. You know, it was like yeah. kind of, it was cool because that's a story that I wanted to tell about where I'm from, about the people that I see the, or that, that I saw that I knew that I love and like this, this state that I'm from. And, you know, when you're out there trying to get somebody else to make your work, it's like, they're always going to say, well, does it have to be there do it here? Or does it have to yeah. be, they all have to be Latinos. Why can't we have, you know, uh, we're going to put, put a different uh, race or whatever on it. And so it's like, we're telling the stories that we want to tell using the characters that we want to see uh, in the places that we're from. And it's something that not everybody else is doing. And so the response that we got for that was really cool. Yeah. I, I love the conventions. I love the, I mean, the, yeah. For me as an artist, um, it, it's, it's, I've been going to conventions like for a long time, you know, as, as a, as a, just kind of visitor. Right. But then my first convention was in 2015 and it was in Tucson and I had nothing on my, I had literally one book and like a couple of drawings and my son, I still have the picture and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, but the, well, the Tucson community was so welcoming. This community, because that con, it's smaller than the Phoenix one. The yeah. Phoenix is awesome. Like the, the, I was a guest at the Phoenix con in 2019, and they're amazing. The staff is amazing. The the, the organization, like how they work with artists, um, you know, it has its times it went up and down. But like it's, I feel like with me, my personal experience has been great, very welcoming. Um, but conventions are amazing. I just love talking to people, like hearing their stories, yeah. their feedback on your work. It's amazing. It's just every time I do it, I just I just get a high. Like I'm like so excited to keep drawing, you know. Especially yeah. when you get the young ones. I'm 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 a huge like I'm a huge proponent of of, of reading for kids, right? So it's like comic books are underrated, and you know they people don't they think they're just cartoons and whatnot and um and the or or the big names the super the big superheroes and when they come to you and they see you're doing something different and then they welcome it it's so so rewarding you know yeah so we might we, we're actually going to be in uh vegas uh, oh, cool. of us. some of the people on the chat will be in vegas as well we're yeah. looking forward to hopefully i'm not sure if you all will be there but it'd be cool to see y'all at the right. con in yeah vegas. um I think um, we are trying to figure out the logistics of that right now. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. hopefully. I was, I was thinking about it too. I was thinking about it. 
Somebody mm. told me about it, and I was like, well, maybe I should do it. Yeah, no thinking. Uh, you got to do it. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah, I, hope, yeah. I hope we get to meet you in one of these Comic Cons. That would be so much fun. I would love to yeah, be cool. in person, interview yeah. you guys, take pictures, you know, have yes. that with y'all. That would be so mm. cool. Right. I would and love to big, get a signed copy of the Biggie. Uh, Biggie. Oh yes, you, you're gonna get it no matter what, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? With the COA. No. With a COA, a cold. <laughs> talk, to, talk to David about that. <laughs> we'll be happy to hook you up. Absolutely. Oh, so, nice, nice. Speaking of artists, Victor, tell me if you were to do a collaboration. Who would you mm. do? Really? Like, shit, there's so many. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, I'll be honored if, like, Mike Mignola just, like, hearted, like, liked one of my drawings. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't care, like, collaborate, but I would love to work, even if it's a cover for one of his books, like, that would be my dream. Honestly, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a huge, huge fan of his work and huge inspiration. Um, like the guy's like so like chill about everything um but there's a few other artists that are more independent um artists that have done an amazing amazing work that basically kind of helped me grow um because i'm self-taught i loved comic books since i was in high school i always dream of making my own comic book i made my first comic book when i was like 17 years old it was only spanish and I still have like, it was all like in a copy paper, like, you know, um, and then it wasn't until like later in life where I, I met some people like Jason Brubaker, who has a book called The Unnatural Talent, that it's all about self-publishing and putting your work out there and, and, and art. Uh, and then uh, Jake Parker, who uh, has a, an amazing following on, he's kind of like the creator of, of, of uh, Inktober. And uh, his following is amazing. And uh, he's just a great person, mentor, friend. Um, so these guys, I kind of follow closely and learn some of the tricks. And then, um, so if I were to collaborate, I would love to work with Jake in something. You know, that's another one. Uh, that's awesome. I hope he sees nice. this, man. I hope he like, sees this. Like, you know what? Let's talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we talk all the time. He's just too busy. <laughs> <laughs> He did. He did a, a drawing for me. I have on the wall. It was like off my other comic book because I did. Um, here's Flying Somnia. So here's my other comic mm -hmm. book. Um, oh, he flexing. He flexing, y'all. Uh, I yeah. see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing about this one is I was able to do this. I, I had the character actually 3D printed. There we go, Tampa. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. Yes. Yeah, right. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, so I'm not gonna take it out, it's on the wall. But Jake, uh, we did a he did his character next to my character, and um it's kind of cool to see when those things happen, you know, and you see your your heroes kind of collaborating with you. Yeah. Um it's cool. But like my dream, honestly, it's uh working with on like a Hellboy comic book. Hellboy, that'll be okay. awesome. That'd yeah, be really I, awesome. I would love I'm to. Give, I'm gonna give a call to my cousin Mike McNola and see because you know, <laughs> he's, probably, he's probably Puerto Rican. It I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we're related. We're related. Uh, we're like six. <laughs> like, you know who else? Scotty Young. Scotty Young. It's an amazing inspiration for my his work, his attitude towards sharing the work. Like I love artists that are like that are real you know what i mean there's a lot of artists out there that they think they're the shit but they're oh, sorry can i say that like yeah you can uh, yeah, uh, you just yeah. did <laughs> <laughs> like and, and just get grounded and you know don't forget where you came from right because like i mean we all start somewhere we all started mm -hmm. with the basics right we all started kind of like liking somebody's work and then you get up there and you forget about where you came from and uh i I try not to, and you know, I grew up in the yeah. projects in Puerto Rico. I, I, I. Somebody told me once, never forget the road you walked because you never know if you have to walk back. You know what I mean? Like it's like, mm. it's right. like keep it real. So I try to always keep a humble attitude, and this is who I am. You know, I teach my kids, my sons, and 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 this is. I try to 
to this is something that I want to have fun with that if I'm not having fun, I'm not going to work on it. Uh, it's something that I want others to enjoy and I'm doing it because I love the art. I love comic books. Um, so yeah. 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 I heard it here. Victor said it, bring it back to basics. <laughs> Let's go. Yes. <laughs> so speaking with the what? inspiration, Viney said, uh, has a, a question here. It says, what writer was an inspiration for you? So I'm guessing, David, one of you, but David. Uh, gosh, man, I think the first comic books that I ever read that I was really like opened my eyes to like what a comic book could be, where it started with Frank Miller's work, uh, in his Batman run, um, doing the Sin City. I remember Sin City when that came out, I was floored. I was just like, I had no idea that a comic book could uh, look like this, could the crazy hard boiled style of it. It, I had been you know, raised just like everybody else. I had been raised on superhero comic books. And then to see that departure from it and how dark everything was and just how it was so cool. Uh, so Frank Miller's work started uh, with me and then I was exposed to Alan Moore and then just devoured everything I could get my hands on and like how literary he got and how verbose and beautiful and, you know, detailed everything that he did was. And then lately I've been a huge James Tinian, Tinian, I always, never know how to pronounce the last name um but uh, james tenney in the fourth has he does the something is killing the children uh, he mm -hmm. just wrapped up the nice house on the lake and uh, mm -hmm. everything that he does is just it's one amazing. humbling because like you read it and i'm just like wow like what the hell do i think i'm doing trying to be <laughs> in, in, in the same industry as this guy but um yeah. i've i love everything that i've read from him and so there's so yeah. many good authors nice do you like jeff lemire I do, yeah. His stuff is awesome, dude. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm reading the the vampire series that he's that what was it called? The uh, with the kids that they're vampires. That's actually a pretty cool book. What the heck is the name I of that one again? Yes, I know which one you're talking about. Um, yeah, also, I've uh, gosh, I'm drawing a blank right now, but monstrous is phenomenal too, and that's more like magical, real like fantasy, a uh, dark fantasy for sure. But uh, I oh, really guys. love that series as well. Little oh, monsters, that's it. Yep. Yes. Good yeah, stuff. That's a good one. Good stuff. I think Monster, one of our folks, <laughs> Adrian, well, we call him almost, um, uh, almost vintage. He, uh, he, he would know. He's got. He's kind of like the trivia master with, especially with indies. He loves some some indies. Matter of yes, fact, nice. about the flex, one of his pieces. Nice. He actually did that, which is really cool. Of uh, oh, that's Damian awesome. Wayne. Nice. That's yeah, so, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he, uh, he's a seller as well. So. Um, he does these uh, backward comic uh, drawings for people who, who want them. So. Yeah, love that. Yeah. So I do have one question for David. I, I hope you right. can at least speak a little bit towards it. Going way back, I believe you worked for Sony back in the day? Back in the day, man. That was my first job in Los Angeles, yeah. Tell me about it. Like, how Did that get you into like everything that you got into because you have a lot of projects i would love to talk about too especially the ones you just finished i believe uh is it uh red riding hood yeah yeah the red riding hoods that was a horror fiction podcast that i did or oh, survivor or oh, girl survivors the last yeah uh, so it it's all about a, a team of final girls. So they were each the lone survivor at the end of a horror movie. And it basically like it starts with this girl. She just survived the end of a horror movie. You know, the uh, slasher was coming after her. She's about to die. And then all of a sudden this team of girls shows up and guns them down. And she realized she learns that they were all survivors of their own massacres. They all team up and they're being led by an enigmatic figure named Mother who is guiding them on this hunt for monsters. And they're uncovering this apocalyptic conspiracy, uh, uniting all of these creatures that have been resurrected and coming after wow. people. Sounds David, nice. do you sleep what? well at night? I need to know. I mean, this is <laughs> I have I I have the cleanest conscience and you would believe not. <laughs> I have a you know, man, I was always dude, like I mean, I was like six, seven years old and I was drawing things. I went to Catholic school and like the nuns would be calling up my parents, like, dude, your son needs an exorcism. Like, I don't know what the hell. <laughs> yeah. going on but uh I was I've always been fascinated with the macabre. I've been fascinated with horror, with the why things scare us. Not just the fact mm -hmm. that things scare us, but why do they scare us? And I've that's always been something that really appeals to me is kind of deconstructing these monsters and figuring out like, you know, what do the monsters represent? Like what's the bigger fear behind us and stuff. And uh, I just 
I've always been like that, you know, and it drove my parents nuts. And then finally, I think once I started getting more serious with my creative pursuits, it made sense to them a little bit more, but like they never understood it. And now it's funny because my daughter is 12 and she is following those footsteps where like I see that in her and I'm, I feel like I'm better equipped to handle it. I don't freak out as much because I understand it a little bit more. And so it's like yeah. trying to like shepherd her and guide her without letting her it's because you know it's like you don't want to tell her like oh yeah this is all awesome you should you're 12 years old you should totally watch all of these extreme horror movies it's like no that's not the case <laughs> but i understand why you're intrigued by it and so it's like yeah. responsibly guiding that that's cool nice. I, I got off topic man what was the original question it was sony. Uh, sony oh yeah yeah so i graduated uh from college and an uncle my my dad's cousin got me a job because he was in the union as a key grip and so he got me a job as a production assistant and i worked on a movie called national security with uh, martin lawrence and steve zahn and it was really brutal work being a production assistant sucks and really opened my eyes to like i always thought like creating movies was so awesome and like you know it was it was such a labor of love and then to be exposed to what a, ta a thankless job it is to most people and like i'd be working with these guys and i was like oh man i read the script this must be the scene where this and they were like yeah i don't care i'm just here to do it you know i'm just here to put together a camera rig or do something like that like i don't care about the art behind it and it really like disillusioned me from the idea of working in that studio system because it is so there's no sold to it you know it's like people aren't passionate about it really mm -hmm. uh, i mean creatives are like once you get into like the writers the actors the directors and stuff they definitely are but like i was working on the set itself and it was such a just felt like a factory job you know like there was nothing to it so i left los angeles moved back to phoenix and started doing independent film um, because i thought some some for some reason i thought that that'd be easier it was definitely not <laughs> easier but you know we did we did make some stuff nice Nice. We did have someone okay. ask a question by me. Uh, Victor, if you were to work on a mainstream character, which one do you feel would work best with your artwork? Nice. Good question. Oh, um, I, I, you know, I'm fascinated with drawing uh, Spider-Man. I love to work on a mainstream. Like uh, on Spider-Man, I have done... Man, I hate flashing that so much, but I do have a drawing right next to me here. Oh, flex! I, I, flex. I knew, I knew when we were on camera with you, you're gonna start flashing people. But... Yeah. <laughs> so that that, that was nice. that was That's uh, awesome. That's yeah. Flex. So I mean, when Matt, when Miles Morales came out, and I found out he was you know half Puerto Rican, I'm like, of course, mm -hmm. uh, like I'm gonna just go crazy with my uh, fan art. Um, he, with, you know about Miles, um, and then I, I I grew up with Spider Man. I found a picture of of my I went to visit my mom in Puerto Rico uh, this last November, and um, and she found a picture of me. I think I was two years old, and I'm holding a Spider Man or something like that. It was like a birthday party, and so it's always been there. So I think <laughs> Spider Man awesome. and Batman for sure. I love drawing Batman. I'm a uh, huge fan. I love the character. I have like a whole wall of Batman. So. Victor, That's you said the wrong thing. thing. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the same thing we do. Like, we fascinated. We love it. We want to put it in our walls and just. It's it. yeah. It's crazy, man. Like my wife is like, "You're a hoarder." I'm like, "No, I'm a collector." <laughs> oh. oh, good. So everybody's wife does that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a problem and this is how <laughs> this is how we deal with it <laughs> no, no, no. nothing to do with, uh, nothing to do with the fact that with uh female just my wife is always telling me the same thing she's like honey how many more comic books are you gonna buy yeah uh, yeah i just it's research yeah, that's what i call it it's yeah, research <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a force field for me. I'm like, oh, this is my space. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's, it's either that or I'm going to go spend a drink and a beer at the bar. So it's like, okay, you know, it's a, uh, or both. I can do my beer here at home drinking, you know, watching, yeah. uh, reading my comic books or whatever. <laughs> comic books, it's all literature. I mean, we read, we learn, we grow, yeah. we can adapt yeah. it, we can. We, we could look at it and be like, man, I went through this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, That's the kind of yeah. stuff I've been through, especially reading Wolverine. When oh, I was yeah. Little. yeah. But so let me ask you this. I don't know if you could <laughs> tell me this. Have you, being in Puerto Rico, have you ever done graffiti? 
Uh, you know, I, when I was younger, I did, but I, I so I'm, like I said, I'm the youngest. So all my brothers got in trouble already before. So <laughs> I, they kind of like, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. And so, and, I mean, but I, I kind of like maybe did it once, you know, but I just, I wasn't good at it. I mean, I like high, highly respect uh, graffiti artists. Um, because it is something that it's just amazing. It's it blows my mind. You There's know, a just lot of Puerto Rico, yeah. That, you know. Oh, and it's amazing. It's it, I have a good friend, uh, those who, uh, who he he started. He we went to school together. He started doing some graffiti and whatnot, and uh, his stuff was get, like getting recognized. But but yeah, no, absolutely. Like it's it's something that I. Like the other day, I was sketching something, and I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I do some graffiti words. And I was like, I don't even know where to start. And like, it's just, uh, it, it's, <laughs> I lost that connection <laughs> completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. We have one more question from the from the um, gallery, David. Same question: If you were to write a mainstream comic, yeah. what would you want to write? I. It's funny because I think it, like Main Street. I mean. Is something is killing the children considered mainstream? Because I know it's Boom Studios, so it's not like a, a small label at all. But it's, since it's not like DC Image or Marvel, I wonder if that would be considered one. Because I've got some ideas for a separate house. They have their monster hunting houses, and I would love to create a house that's focused in the Southwest. I know right now mm -hmm. the story arc is in New Mexico, but it's like an outsider visiting New Mexico. And I've just, you know, being from the Southwest, from the desert, uh, I think that it'd be amazing to do something that's a little bit more steeped in like Mesoamerican mythology and and capturing some of that and so if i could do something like that i always joked around that i had an idea for batman where like bruce wayne is forced to confront the fact that like you know as the ce as a billionaire ceo of an industry he could have he is responsible for most of the crime that's happening in gotham city and like you know having to confront something on more like those social economic terms but i don't know if that would go over very well <laughs> so maybe i could create some kind awesome. of spin-off i don't know look at white knight that would be very white mm -hmm. knight yeah Joker oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he made him look like he was the bad guy. I mean, yep. mm -hmm. that I gotta rethink time. my life now. Thank you, David. <laughs> <laughs> Man, this has been a blast with y'all. Yeah, this yeah. Is I love it. Well, I, I got some. Yeah, I got uh -oh, some. Uh -oh. I got some. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh -oh. Look, y'all doing all the talking. Let me talk. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, mine, I would just like to ask if there's any advice or anything that you can give somebody like the, that motivational push um, for anybody that's interested in doing what you're doing. You know, just to, you know, you got this. Besides yeah. that, you can't say that. No, I would say, so I'm not going to say you got this. What I am going to say is that you cannot do this alone and it is really like the art community the comic book community is amazing and it is a community and there's so many of us that support each other and if you um find your tribe find your you know go to your local comic book shop go to meetup events go to something find people that are as passionate as you are um start from passion start from passion then go down talent in my opinion talent will always come after passion i'd rather work with somebody who is less talented but has more passion for this than somebody who is amazingly talented but is just considering it as a paycheck or you know they're only looking out for themselves kind of thing but if you find somebody who is passionate about your project about the story that you want to tell and you form that team you can get it done for sure there's avenues it's never been easier to get it done with the things that we have available to us like kickstarter and the fact that things can be done digitally and the fact that you know uh you can reach a community through social media but it's also been never been more difficult because now it's so easy to get diluted and the uh, fall victim to the algorithms and you know having to get out there and so don't expect immediate success because it is a grind but be willing to do the grind and you will go as far as you want and you know just but start with passion it's got you've got to be passionate about it and you got to find people that are just as passionate as you are yeah i, I mean i want to add to that and I, that's a beautiful question um i say passion passion can get you also to a certain point but you also have to add grit because For sure. uh, passion you know a, a boxer could be passionate about the boxing and he gets punched in the face and he's like mm, i'm walking out Right, so you have to have grit and, and and be able to resist 
the challenges you're going to be confronting, like everything yeah. you mentioned, the algorithm, people, uh, the voices in your head telling you you suck because you're comparing to everything else. Um, so you got to plow through all of that and ultimately uh, just just do it because you want to do it. You know, as an artist, it's very challenging, mostly because we are literally comparing all the time. You know, people will compare. Books will be judged by the cover. It's ridiculous, like how this comic book world has gone into a covered game. Um, and as a self-published, and David can tell you about it, and you all know, uh, that's how what we're competing against. You know, we yeah. want to move the merchandise, so now we have to kind of, okay, get different artists, and we got to get eyes on the product. Um, so as an artist that's coming out or somebody like, you know, it's out there that, you know, likes to draw, immediate thing would be like, oh, I'm not good enough. Well, guess what? Yes, you are. You're good. We all started somewhere. I mean, mm -hmm. follow, like, don't be afraid of copying your favorite artists. I mean, I'm, I'm the first one to tell you, I went on like a year of research where I was studying my favorite artists. I was... You can look at my art and be like, oh, that's the Mignola era of my work. You know, like, I'm not kidding. And I did start dialing down until you kind of find your own voice. Um, another thing, give yourself a challenge, like give yourself a 30 day challenge. You know, uh, Inktober is a, the first one that comes to mind. That's how I came up with Red. It was through a 30 day challenge. It was, okay, I want to do. Uh, because people ask me to all the time, so how do you find time? It's like the time it's there. You'd be surprised. Um, so what I do is I sit in front of the I in front of the TV watching a show with my iPad and I start drawing. Right. So during that 30 day challenge, I found out that I created a habit. So the point that my family was like, wait, you're not drawing today. So it became the norm that I would come home from work. I sit down for an hour. I'll draw and then I'll do everything else. So that was my time. And it was just like meditation and I would just go about it, you know? And I started like everybody else doing like horrible drawing, I guess. <laughs> uh, so practice, practice, practice. I mean, and I'm talking to artists in particular, right? Like if, if you're out there, you want to draw, don't be afraid. Go to comic cons, talk to these artists, show your work, ask questions. Um, but more than anything, just draw, practice, you know, and like that passion turned into grit. And I promise you, there's nothing more beautiful than holding your work in your hands. Like it's like, exactly. you know, right. okay, uh, you said you want, I, I have this thing in front of me. It's like Yoda says, do or do not. There is no try, right? <laughs> so it's, it's like, oh, I want to try to do a comic book. No, no, you do it. Good or bad. It doesn't matter. Finish, not perfect. That's what Jake says. Finish, not perfect. You can walk to a convention and be like, hey, David, check out my work. <laughs> you want to trade? And that's how we met. I mean, we go like, yeah. hey, here's my comic. He showed me his comic. And then a year later, we co we co were collaborating. So it's just, it's amazing. Yeah. And Red is awesome. So if you haven't checked it out, if anybody uh, watching this has not checked it out, you should totally check it out. And uh, Victor, number two should be coming, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm almost done. I'm like three pages <laughs> away from finishing. Oh, I can't. And, I can't wait. Yeah, and I'm crazy because I'm starting a new one, and this one's gonna be um, just in the character design. But that's how I, I normally would like to come up with like two or three characters and then start my stories around it. And this one is gonna be very much focused on the Southwest. Uh, and the uh, problems that we're having with water shortage and, or water. Uh, oh, yeah, like right uh, my alley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can talk. Maybe we can talk there. Heck yeah. Something that I'm planning here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. Man, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I hope we do this again real, real soon. I hope we meet Absolutely. each other. This is. We have to. We have to. If American. we get up to Vegas, that'd be amazing. But otherwise, yeah, we got to figure something out because that'd be great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe right. like uh, you know. all I heard was is uh, y'all are going to Vegas. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you're hey, you man, are man going to Vegas. That. All right, we're going. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the Puerto Rico con is happening in April, so I'm not gonna be able to go. Yeah, you guys should go down there, man. Yeah, man, I would love to go to Puerto I would Rico love to as well. Yeah. So, so we have talked about Spanish. a Gen X. 
conference in Puerto Rico. Ooh. Mm. So uh, we, as a collective, have talked about that for a while. So we may have to make that happen. I might just have to jump on the bandwagon there, but Heck we're definitely yeah. looking forward to Vegas for sure. But cool. yeah. we know we're at the tail end. We want to make sure that everybody has all the questions asked. Uh, there's some some Boricuas in here. A lot of people flexing. They they <laughs> they love. It. And then people say Vegas, baby. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian's talk about, but I, I hope you know hope, <laughs> <laughs> what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So well, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. These guys are talking about jumping out of airplanes, so I don't yeah. even want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna skydive with my homie um, Marcus, and I'm think about it. I almost got Miss Ebony. But then she backed out yeah. on me. So no, it was you know, it was nice no. meeting you. <laughs> I think I'm I think I'm uh, I'm back on it. I think I'm gonna still do it. I, That's I it, uh, dude. That's the one thing. That's the one thing I would never do. <laughs> no bottle be have a plane. No, no. Like my, you know, you know it, it's funny. Another- I'd rather jump out of a plane because I feel like I have a little bit more time with myself to talk about if things go wrong <laughs> versus bungee cord jumping. To me, I'm bungee a, cord yeah, jumping. 100%. I'm like, uh, did I just get two seconds of my life to think about what I did and didn't do? Uh, I don't know. Know. <laughs> Call my mama. You know, can I do oh, a lot of Lord. other things? Yeah, no. At least the more skydiving seconds that I get out <laughs> yeah. of the plane. I, I met an old lady once and said, if God wanted you to fly, he would have given you wings. <laughs> like, no, I that get like it. a comic book. I know, right? <laughs> the, the, I, I would like to uh, say it today here. Today we call that the Chancleta Diaries. So yes. There we go. The yes. Diaries. I'll read that. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, that's awesome. All right, that's so awesome. I have to tell him Miss Keys is going to close us out. Yes. Well, first, I want to thank both you and David for joining us today. Um, And also, we would like to thank the comic book community, including our Illuminati Flex fam. You know who you are. Where's our Flex family at? Where yet? Where yet? (laughs) But again, remember to to subscribe, like, share with all your people, and come back for future episodes with Dope Creators. Part three of the heroes in crisis dealing with social justice in comic books. And maybe, just maybe, you'll see us interviewing your favorite local comic shop, or as we know it as LCS for short. Uh, We are the dream team who will always bring things back to basics, y'all. Always bring it back. So, you guys, I am Miss Ebony Keys. I'm your boy, Tempos. And I'm Gen X, and we will see you next time on The Dopest, the flyest, and now your most favorite podcast about comic book culture ever. So a couple of weeks, we'll be putting out some stuff. Make sure that you follow these folks. Do you have any hashtags and Instagrams and all that that you'd like to promote? And when's the uh, night that you what We got so engrossed in who you were. And we talked about Chihuahuas, but when are the next ones coming out produced uh, as far as the Chihuahuas concerned? So first the Instagram and then the Chihuahuas. Uh, yeah, we'll be actually, I'll be at Mile High Comics in Denver this weekend with issue number three. So I guess that's technically our launch of issue three. And then issue four is almost done. So I don't have a time, an exact time, but you can expect that in the next few months. Uh, and then we'll get cracking on issue five, which I'm super excited about because the script is absolutely insane. So can't wait awesome awesome and you guys can find me on instagram at vot lines vs and victor od lines uh, my website is uh, votlines.com it's work in progress so don't judge um and then i'm i'm everywhere else at vot lines i'm actually trying to I signed up to TikTok. I think I'm gonna try TikTok as well, just to kind of. So share we can expect my... you twerking at some point, or probably I probably will. I probably <laughs> do some, you know, maybe some salsa, some merengue. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll dance for money, for, not for, no, not for money. But I say uh, for comics. Just to say that I'll dance for comics. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, thank you to both. Uh, this team is uh, so thankful that you all uh, graced us yes. today for an hour. Yes. 
Um, I know that, um, you know, your time is precious and we cannot wait to continue to support you all. Yes. Um, again, this book, we can't wait for this book and the other things that you're uh, invested in and that you're a, a part of what projects you are and know that you're family for life with us. So whenever yeah. you want to come yeah. on, please don't forget us. And we yeah. definitely won't forget you. You guys were amazing. So thank you so cool. much. Yeah. Until next yeah, this time, was so family, much fun. we appreciate you. Until next time, we'll see you on the flip side in a few weeks. So back to basics, a comic book podcast. You know what we do. Love you. <laughs> cool. Take care. Gracias, familia.